So I want to really thank for this honor of giving this plenary uh, talks. I'm really going to start talking about an idea that was conceived uh, now more than 15 years ago, basically, and it's now turning into a real technology. So I'm going to talk about uh, um, quantum cascade uh, laser compact widely tailable source from the mid-infrared as short as 3 micro up to very close to 300 micron uh, wavelength. So you see, um, basically we, uh, this is sort of an idea where we stand with the uh, uh, sources. At this uh, uh, end we have the electronics of uh, a course and we can say we are up to one terahertz frequency, 300 micron wavelengths. On the other side here we actually come from actually diode laser. And then there is, uh, but the diode lasers sort of, you know, start to run out of steam as you try to go to uh, wavelengths longer than three, than three micro. So quantum cascade lasers actually capture the uh, space of the uh, mid-infrared region where they now operate high power continuous wave at uh, room uh, uh, temperature and making inroads into the so-called terahertz uh, gap region where there really yet no small, compact, and efficient light source that work at room uh, temperature. So I want to distinguish particularly two important spectral regions here. The mid-infrared, which I define roughly from 3 to 25 micron. This is a so-called molecular fingerprint region where most molecules have the absorption feature. The applications are quite wide-ranging. They go from biomedical to environmental, chemistry to uh, security and so forth. Other applications include infrared countermeasure, uh, possibly in the future, I think this is still open to uh, question, free space, uh, co uh, free space communication, LiDAR and uh, uh, remote sensing, and in particular these are the two important atmospheric windows. And then the terrace region, which is uh, uh, defined, you know, from 60 to uh, 300 uh, micro, you might wonder there is a gap, yes, for uh, uh, compact, uh, for semiconductors, uh, there is a region where uh, light does not uh, uh, propagate, which is called in the, uh, the, uh, re the restralen band, the so-called polariton gap. And uh, so you see the basic uh, semiconductor light source is of course a diode uh, uh, laser and we don't know how it works. Essentially photons are created by a vertical transition across the uh, band gap. So the key point is that the band gap determines the, uh, the uh, wavelength. So if you want to widely vary the wavelengths you basically have no choice. You have to change semi, uh, semi, semiconductor. Now, with this scheme, it's getting harder and harder as you reduce the, uh, the band gap. It's not easy to uh, get good, uh, good laser for a variety of reasons, some fundamental, some technological. And of course, this technology has created a big, uh, uh, a big revolution, and they appear everywhere, you know, semiconductor laser from laser pointer to scanner, uh, to uh, medicine for surgery, optical uh, disc recording, uh, light wave uh, communication being the, uh, probably the one of uh, greatest penetration. Now you see in a quantum cascade uh, laser essentially we eliminate the so-called bang up uh, slavery. Okay, basically the wavelength is no more determined by the bang up of the material because we lace between discrete quantum states of uh, quantum wells that we can design uh, so that the wavelength spans a very long, uh, a very wide range. If you like, the frequency of the photon is uh, limited by the depth of these, of these quantum wells. And so the key point is by staying in the same material system, okay, we can uh, create laser with a tremendous range of wavelengths, essentially covering possibly up to the entire mid, mid IR to the far infrared, essentially by tailoring layer thickness. This is an example of quantum de uh, design where bottom up we uh, design everything quantum mechanically, basically. In fact, this was our, our first paper in science in uh, 1994. 
and initially it operated only in 90 uh, Kelvin. Uh, the progress has been much faster than they could, we could possibly uh, dream. And in fact, you can never predict what technology is actually going to do. I say the technology is far less predictable than, uh, than uh, science, actually, because there are so many other factors that come in. And now in uh, 2009, the commercialization is uh, uh, very strong. There are uh, large companies into the act, such as Hama, such as Hama uh, Matsu partnership between Thales and Alcatel, and uh, a whole list of companies that is growing almost by, by the year. So, well, the quantum cascade lasers, the idea essentially is to recycle the electron many times, okay, from one stage to the actual next. Because the uh, uh, electron does not recombine with, with, with a hole, essentially it can be reinjected once it has laid into the next stage so you can get n photons per electron. And the way you do this, you have to apply a, a voltage, a current flow, so essentially it's like a wire and laser photons basically uh, 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 come out. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that, of course. And so you see the key thing is the control of the layers by modern epitaxial techniques such as MB. In fact, I have to give here credit to Al Cho, the pioneer of molecular beam AP uh, taxi. And the fact I could associate with him for so many years has clearly made this uh, laser uh, possible. So essentially we can control layer thickness in arbitrary ways here. And this shows the multiple stages of a quantum cascade, the laser and so forth. The two dominant material systems are for the mid IR, this alloy on indium phosphide, and for the far IR is the aluminum gallium arsenide system. So what makes this device kind of interesting, kind of uh, special? Well, there are a number of things I want to point out. So the large quantum design potential. Essentially, you uh, design everything, wave function, matrix element, uh, scattering times, and so forth. And more interesting, as I will show you, can get broadband laser. And this is a laser where it's easy to simultaneously, I mean simultaneously, laser over a broad spectrum of, of uh, 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 wavelength. And you, by, because you can reuse your electron many times, you can get high optical power. Very interesting now, because of the large dipole matrix element, you can have large Rabi frequencies. So you can observe actually coherent phenomena in a solid state laser at room uh, temperature. And this is very interesting. You have ultra fast carrier dynamics. In fact, the relaxation oscillation, they are damped. And uh, you can design giant optical nonlinearities in this inverted medium with, with uh, population in uh, uh, version. And so this can lead to interesting new, new light sources. Also the fact that the TM polarized can give uh, rise to interesting micro laser. And interestingly, I think some of you know that semiconductor laser, the line width is larger than, uh, than all other laser. And it's, it's called the line width in, uh, in, uh, enhancement factor. The QC laser, however, is a semiconductor laser that follows the line width the original theory of shallow and uh, shallow and towns. So in some respect, this is more similar to an atomic laser, basically. 